Yeah, g'day guys. I've had this uh, Marley turntable now for about a year, and uh, when I went to go buy it, there weren't that many reviews around. Uh, so I figured now that I've had this for about 12 months, I'd uh, do a quick review on it in case anybody else is iron it up and uh, give you some pros and cons. The uh, sort of out the gate, too long, don't read version of this is, uh, yeah, if you're looking at it, um, go ahead and buy it. It's a pretty good unit, especially for the price that you pay. Uh, it's got some nice features. It's got a pretty decent sound out of it. Um, there's some downsides, which we'll get into shortly, but they're all pretty minor. All in all, um, I'd recommend it. The, uh, get into a little bit more details about the upsides of this. Um, yeah, price-wise, it cost me about 300 New Zealand dollars, which is about uh, 220 US dollars or something like that, which in, you know, the rounds of what you can pay for a turntable uh, is fairly cheap, especially one that comes with so many features. Um, comes with your usual ability to switch between 35 and 45 RPM. Um, I haven't discovered a way to fine-tune that if you needed to. Um, theoretically, you shouldn't have to. The underside of this aluminium platter comes with uh, all these little teeth that run around the circumference, and so that should automatically govern it to that RPM. So you shouldn't ever have to adjust that. Uh, comes with a counterweight on the end, which is fairly easily adjustable, um, an anti-skate, a uh, clamp for the tone arm, and uh, the stylus also comes with a, uh, a plastic cover that you can slide on and off, which um, if you've got a very active toddler like I do, is a bit of a lifesaver. Uh, aside from that, um, most importantly, it looks and sounds really nice. Um, comes with an inbuilt phono amp, which um, I use when I uh, play records, and it sounds pretty good. Uh, if you've got your own external phono amp, you can turn that off and uh, just use your external one, and uh, there's no issues there. Um, it also comes with a cable to... Um, be able to plug this into a PC, so if you wanted to record your vinyls to MP3, um, you can do that. The only thing you need is a, a program on your computer called Audacity, which you can download for free online, and uh, recording your vinyls to MP3 is actually really straightforward. Um, the downsides to this, uh, the, there's not many of them. Only one of them is getting a bit close to being a deal breaker, but um, first of all, uh, the platter is not really machined um, as well as it could be, it's not bad, but um, you can see the sort of the tone arm moving up and down a bit as it um, as it glides on the vinyl. And uh, you know, your your more hardcore vinyl enthusiasts will tell you that over time, uh, that's going to wear out your stylus and wear out your vinyl records and all the rest of it, which is a fair point to make. Um, I don't think that's really enough movement to be that concerned about. Uh, the other thing. Um, and this is the one that's almost a deal breaker, is the anti-skate on this. It, um, <laughs> it's shit. Um, it's quite powerful. So if you have it set to, um, if you have it set to two and a half, which is what it recommends, um, you'll find you'll, you'll barely get halfway through your record before it just sort of starts pinging back on you. Um, you see all that movement that's in there. And that's only set to two and a half. Um, which is, it's way too powerful. Um, my best success with this was to have the anti-skate set to 0.5 um, and that worked really well up until somewhat recently where I got some vinyl records where the grooves came quite close to the center and with those ones even at 0.5 it started to skip on those very inner tracks um, so now I run with the anti-skate on zero I have it completely turned off and uh, I haven't noticed any issues with it so in my experience, uh, with the anti-skate, less is better. Uh, so from that, um, the counterweight on the uh, back of the tone arm is um, it's quite easy to move. It's, it's not very, um, there's not a lot of friction in there. So every time you put the dust cover on and off, it knocks that. So you're constantly having to reset that every time you go to use this, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, initial setup as well, and this wasn't mentioned anywhere, I had to find online for this. There's a flathead screw just on the side there, which you need to loosen when you set this thing up in order to set the tone arm to zero. Um, it comes really tight from the factory and you can't get it, you can't get a good zero unless you loosen that with a flathead screwdriver. Um, last but not least, and again this isn't a deal breaker, but still a little bit annoying. Um, it's got an auto stop for 33 RPM, which is, which is great. Um, but
but unfortunately the 45 doesn't. So there's your 33, gets to the end of the record, stops, sweet as, um, and then your 45, or at least your, your vinyl discs that, uh, or sorry, your vinyl records that play at 45 RPM of this size, the stylus doesn't go far enough to the center to be able to auto stop it. So it just sits there in the groove, which is, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, it may wear out the stylus eventually. Um, it really just means you can't just walk away and forget about it when you're playing a 45 record, unless it's um, a proper 45 record. And then if the stylus goes that little bit closer, then it does auto stop. But for these ones, it doesn't. Um, thankfully, there's not that many um, of these size records that are 45 RPM. Uh, that's really the long and short of it. So a few little downsides, nothing major. Honestly, um, I'd buy it. it. It's pretty good, especially for the price that you pay. Um, I've got some, um, some, some really good quality out of it. So um, yeah, happy to recommend it.